Go ahead. Your mic's on. I thought you were checking the mics. No, no, I got it covered. You know what, Mike? I don't see any lights on on the Listen, computer. Are you are you listening to me? And you know what? I'm looking at I'm I'm li- hey. listening to you, but I see what I'm, I'm seeing. I'm the one. Are we having an argument right now before the podcast even begins? <laughs> All right. Welcome to Messy Parenting, <laughs> a uh, Catholic conversation on marriage and family. And I'm Mike Hernan. And yes. I'm Alicia Hernan. <laughs> and uh, tonight we're going to be, or today we're going to be talking about um, arguing. And <laughs> we thought this was important. We've already talked about siblings, uh, siblings arguing, sibling conflict. Now we thought, you know what? Let's get to where the real arguments happen. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> some of you may uh, may be married to a saint, but my wife is not, and so we we, we Nora happen is to my husband. <laughs> we happen to argue every now and then. <laughs> uh, I think we're, we're arguing less these days, maybe. Yes. But uh, we have less time to talk. We barely see each other. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> you can't argue as much just by a text as I'm traveling or something. That's you know? right. Yeah. Um, anyway, but, but uh, before we get into the whole subject, maybe you could uh, open us up with a prayer. Here. Absolutely. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask your you to send your Holy Spirit to be with us. Help us to address this subject with clarity for all of those who are out there listening. We pray for all of the marriages um, of all of the all of our listeners and for all of our friends and family. And we just ask you to help us in this small way, Lord, that you use our gifts to help us um, bring your truth into this world. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Um, Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're talking about arguing. And um, the, the the whole point, well, you should start off. You, you know, it, Well, arguing we is not as bad as you think, basically. I think a lot of people look at arguing and they say, well, all arguing is bad. All arguing, we shouldn't, we shouldn't never argue Isn't at it all. Isn't uncatholic? And that's <laughs> definitely not, because there's a lot of Catholics that have argued in our history. True. Um, but uh, I just want to give an example. Our, we have a good friend, Kimberly and Scott Hahn, live here in Steubenville. And Kimberly is a good friend and a beautiful, beautiful person. And I was actually at one of her talks once, and she gave an example of when she was uh, first married, and her and Scott had their first argument, and she was just devastated. She was devastated because in her family, she never saw her parents argue. Hmm. And actually, we've been able to meet her parents, too, and they are amazing, they are awesome. amazing, beautiful people. But anyway, and I can understand how you know maybe she never saw them argue, but she went to her mom and she said, I think our marriage is over. It's dissolving. We had this argument. And her mom said, honey, your father and I argued all the time. And she was just shocked by that. But I think that, and Kimberly's point was, and our point is as well, that it's okay. I think it's okay for your children to see you disagree. Now, of course, there's always things that should only happen in private. Ideally, you you are arguing, if you if arguing just alone, so they don't have to see any tumult. But to disagree is not a problem. And when you do disagree, it's okay. Maybe you didn't see your parents like Kimberly didn't. But, right. But it's normal. It's natural. It's part of life. Right. But I mean, what I was going to say is that I think that there's some some parts of arguing that you should never do in front of anyone, including okay. your children. Oh, gotcha. um, but that it's OK, you know, to disagree because right. you because it happens to everybody. That's right. You know, and it's important. I think the only person you're never going to argue with, you'll always agree with 100 percent of the time is yourself. Well, you know, I, I, I had a. Um, some, I, I was in politics for a while, and I had somebody always say to me, oh, you know, you know, you should run for office because I can't find anybody else I agree with. They wouldn't agree with me because I am the only one who agrees with me 100% of the time. So, <laughs> exactly. And that's in politics, and it's in marriage. You don't have to always agree, and, and you're not going to, and that's in lies an argument, a conflict, potential at least. And I think it's good to recognize, too, that different couples, you know, everybody's different. Like we always say in all of our podcasts, every family is different, you know, and, and certainly every couple is different and people have different thresholds of arguing. Like some people really, and I have, you know, good friends that they just say, we just don't really argue a lot. And which is and not our fine. experience. And that's not our experience at all. Or if they do argue, it's more like a discussion. You're like, oh, well, I think this, I think like this. Like they could have it on a podcast or something and <laughs> people wouldn't turn it off. But... Uh, for other couples, they argue more frequently, and arguing may, you know, uh, 
include, you know, standing up and just big motions and lots of gestures and lots of raised voices. And but that is that couple's threshold and that's appropriate and that's not breaking relationship for that couple. Right. So that's what is important is for you and your spouse to realize that you're unique and how you are as long as, you know, there's no permanent damage done. Obviously any kind of physical, you know, well, altercation the, is is the, absolutely yeah. off the table. But as far as, you know, how you argue that is going to be different for everybody. And if you have friends who say, oh, we never argue, or we only argue once a month, There's, and you argue once a week or once a day, don't feel bad about that. It, right. It's okay. It, right. But there are principles that are important right. that to always, be, to always keep in mind. Right. So, And that's kind of what we want to kind of give you the, the big outline to say, okay, as long as you need, we believe, that's we right. found in our experience, keeping these principles is what can make your arguing fruitful Right. And unifying instead of disunifying. Right. So when we when we talk about arguing or or disagreeing with style, um, <laughs> you know, That's very good. And so so what we got here is what is the purpose of it? What's the point? What is the meaning of it? And ultimately, the 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 meaning or the purpose of uh, arguing is unity. May not seem that way when you're arguing in the in the heat of a of a battle or whatever. Um, but really, ultimately, that, that is the goal. And, and the church says that is one of the fruits or one of the ends or one of the goals of marriage is the spousal unity. Right. But the reality is, is that we are all sinful beings. We got a lot of rough edges, and we're trying to smooth out those rough edges, and, and that kind of hurts. And, you know, we are, we are called to be the two should become one flesh. Right. So if, if that's the goal of marriage, and really when we're in an argument, in a disagreement, in a spousal conflict— the goal is greater unity. And I think that's important just to have that front and center right in front of you. My mom, when we um, first got married, she would say to me, you know what, when you're arguing with your spouse, you always have to remember, is it better to be right alone or wrong together? Right. Like hypothetically, if, you're, if your goal, if the goal of your argument is that you are right, right. you are right. Well, hypothetically, okay, fine. You're right, you win. What, what did you gain? What did you win? What What did you win, really? And at what expense did you win? Did you win it at the expense of your spouse's dignity, at the expense of your spouse's feelings? Yeah, like or, or, that, the, or their their greater and deeper love and affection for you. Exactly, exactly. Now, obviously, so, we're not talking here about moral rights or wrongs. We're talking about things that we, you can naturally and and rightfully disagree on, right? And have differing opinions or what have you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'll, we'll just kind of put this disclaimer here for yeah, the rest whole, of the podcast yeah. <laughs> is we're not talking about um, egregious moral wrongs to the sacrament of marriage as far as um, unfaithfulness or abuse or anything like that. We are talking about your regular, because we're not really qualified to talk about the big those big right. things, but we're just talking about your regular run-of-the-mill everyday Catholic couple who loves each other, who is just trying to do the right thing and trying right. to get through the day, which but, but, I think is probably most of the people exactly. listening. And even in those scenarios, the reality is, is, is that God still wants us to work on our unity, work on the, the end and the purpose of marriage is to, to grow in that unity. Right. Um, even, even with all the challenges that life might throw at us. Right. So a lot of times when we're arguing, um, one of the reasons that we start arguing a lot of often is because we're angry. You know, you're angry at something that your spouse did or did not do or said or whatever. And that anger is rooted in, uh, we were just reading, yeah. um, just reading a great book by Fulton Sheen called Victory Over Vice. That's we're in a awesome. couples group and we're just doing one. It's He talks about the seven deadly sin and we're doing one sin a week for Lent. And it's been very, very fruitful. But the first chapter was about anger. And um, Archbishop Sheen made the point that anger has its roots in justice. And because, reason. Uh, yeah, it's right. reasonable to end justice. And right. we believe because there is a perception of wrongdoing. And right. so in, you know, for our purposes, we're talking about marriage, there's a perception that your spouse did something wrong to you. That's right. Or maybe there was a real, a real sin that happened. You know, obviously you're spouse is a sinner. My spouse is a sinner. <laughs> His spouse is a sinner. <laughs> All a bunch of sinners here. <laughs> but that, that's, that is, that is going, that's going to happen. Right. But the point, what we have to remember is that the point of that, that justice, that desire for justice rising up, up in us, it can't be that we receive, um, that we receive justice for our wrongdoing. But it needs to be that we forgive. Right. That we forgive the other person. And our model for that 
of course, is Jesus Christ himself. Right. And we need to be crucifying ourselves. Right. We need to say no to ourselves. Because what did Jesus do? What was the ultimate wrongdoing? The ultimate wrongdoing was Jesus being put upon the cross right. by those who he loved. Right. And by us, and by our sins. Exactly. And so does, do our, does our spouse put us on the cross sometimes, you know, by their wrongdoing or perception of wrongdoing? Yes. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Right. And that's what we need to do. When we see, when we are hurt by our spouse because of that, and we're angry because we perceive that they did something wrong, we need to say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And we need to really believe that. When, our, um, when we were married, we were married by Michael's very close uh, friend, Father Bill Gaffney, who was a beautiful priest. And he, during our, his homily, he said to us, he was like, I want you to look at this crucifix. I want you to hold the crucifix between you and realize that this is your marriage. That's right. This is your marriage. This is what love looks like. And this right. Is, this yeah. is what love looks like. And just and to cling to that, that and cling to that in good times and in bad. And remember, mm -hmm. on those high moments and on those very low moments, this is what love is all about. Right? Because it's all about getting to heaven, people. That's it right. is all about getting to heaven. And if you are married, God has made it clear to you your vocation, your path to holiness is... Yeah. Is this marriage and this is being crucified? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's hard. And but again, if our whole if we remember the whole point and purpose is unity, then we have to ask ourselves, how do we get there? You know? Right. And uh, but if we start thinking about this with that kind of an intention in mind, I think it makes mm -hmm. things a lot uh, a lot more appreciable. But you have to have that very great desire for that in the first place. Because I think then the two of you, instead of staring at each other, duking it out, <laughs> you can be turning, walking next to each other, walking towards the Lord. And saying, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna figure this out because it's kind of like like a triangle. Jesus is the, the Lord is at the top of the triangle, and you guys are the, you know, two bottom points. And as you walk together towards the Lord, you're going to become closer and closer together. Right. And so, if your goal is to achieve that unity, and you're both looking at the Lord, that's gonna happen. Right. So that is you have. To, it's very very important to remember that. Um, no matter what your threshold of arguing is, is to remember that. So how do you do that? How do we achieve? How do you achieve unity? Easily said, not so yeah. easily done, because it takes a lifetime. You know, my parents, they have an awesome marriage, and they've been married, gosh, almost 50 years. It's going to be 50 years in 2018. And they still argue. <laughs> so right. they're obviously still working on it, too. Well, first one, so the couple little tips I get, not tips, but overall things. Just kind of one overarching is, principles. is to desire... You need to desire clarity over agreement, or as Stephen Covey in his book, The Seven Habits, says, seek to understand. Well, I mean, St. Francis. And St. Francis, okay, yeah. That's where I'm going with here, okay? Because uh, that's kind of where I am. Yeah, yeah seek, first, Francis, seek first to understand. <laughs> Forget Stephen Covey. <laughs> but seek first to understand. I mean, just to really have that at the forefront of, of your desire in this conversation. So if you're having an argument, you're, you're probably not thinking that first, but wait a second. Let's take a break. Let's, 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 let's put ourselves on hold. Mm -hmm. and seek clarity. I don't necessarily have to agree, but I first need to understand. Because what is our usually our first response is? Defense. Right, is I want you to understand me. You need to understand. You don't I, understand, that's exactly right? how it or always you is. You don't understand, you don't understand. Well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Your goal should not be that you make yourself understood, but that you are trying to understand the other person. If you're both doing that, then you're going to have greater unity. You take yourself, you put yourselves in that person's shoes. Right, right. And, and that kind of goes back to what we were said about the um, perception of wrongdoing. You know, well, let's put yourself in that other person's shoes right. and see, you know, maybe they didn't understand, they didn't know what they were trying, you know. They didn't know how much this would affect you. Or you don't know the kind of day that they had. Right. You know, or whatever. Which kind of gets to our second thing, which is, our second point, is to try to find the root of the cause. Try to find the, the root, root um, cause. Right. Trying to find the root of what's what's really going on yeah. here. Yeah, going deeper. So, you know, so if you're having, a, you know, an argument or disagreement, let's just, uh, I'll we use We think of some examples. Yeah, right. So this is, this is an example. Let's just say, uh, you know, I'm, let's just say we're at the end of church and I'm talking to somebody and, um, and Alicia comes in a little frazzled and really kind of interrupts, you know, the conversation I'm having and says, we got to go now, get in the car, we got to get out of here. And... I get angry. I get mad. And and am I getting mad that she wants to leave and go home? No. And, 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 you know, I'm angry because I, you know, what's the root cause really? 
is that I felt disrespected by my wife in public in front of my friends. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a big deal. And my, so, but, but it, when we get in the car and we're snippy at each other and trying to be quiet or, or contain ourselves in front of the kids, you know, we need to really first seek to understand. And then if I realized, oh, you know what, Alicia had this going on and this kid was, was, you know, exploding at mass with their diaper over here or someone's <laughs> uh, losing their temper over there or some teenagers, you know, this, that or the other thing. And she's just at the end of her wits. But we still need to go back to what is the root challenge or the root cause mm -hmm. so that we can address it and move on from it. But again, it's it's about understanding where the other's coming from because you already understand what you think you understand where you're coming from. Right, of course. Well, this is the other thing, like an example I thought of was um, like coming in, like if I've been out at a, a mom's group or, you know, out shopping or whatever, and Mike was watching the kids and I come in and the house is a mess. The house is a wreck, you know, and the kids are jumping all over the place and maybe they're not in bed yet or they haven't been given dinner. I can get really angry at that. Right. That would be something that we would, you know, that we would could argue over. And I have to realize well, when we sit down to talk about that and have it out, maybe not right at that second, but later on if we have time to sit down and actually talk about it, realize, well, why am I, why was I really mad about that? Was I really mad just because the kids weren't in bed or the house was a mess? Well, Those are a examples of or the symptoms that are showing right. itself, right? But what I would really, maybe I'm really mad because, or hurt, because my love language would be acts of service, and I just felt very unloved. Right. And, and disrespected. I'm sorry, or, dear. <laughs> this didn't actually happen, either of these things. It probably happened at some point in our marriage, but not recently. But but that's looking for, well, what are the root causes? Is it really, you know, that you didn't put, that you didn't hang up your shirt or whatever? Or is it really that you didn't put the keys away in the right spot or whatever? Is that really it? Or is it something there's an deeper. under, there's something deeper. And I think that sometimes we can get caught up in, well, you said this, and then I said this, and then you said this, and that and you're like, want a referee to come in and be like, right. okay. Wait, who said what? You know? He said, he said, <laughs> Exactly. Said? It's the whole he said, she said thing, which in the end, you have to realize it does not matter. Yeah. What is really the root cause of the hurt? That is what needs to be addressed. Because obviously we're, what we're talking about here is, is both seeking unity, but also seeking reconciliation in the end of right. this right and so if there was a wrong we don't want to dismiss that you know just because we want to mm -hmm. forgive others and, and we talked about that R really again out of justice and out of the the unity of your marriage it's not you're not supposed to become a carpet to be walked on and destroyed it, it's you're trying to mutually seek understanding about each other right. and when you know when I don't know how to love or I don't know that I'm hurting her that's actually really helpful for me to do my job as her, my, as my wife's husband, to be able to know, okay, this isn't how she feels love, and this is actually how she feels hurt and 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 I'm unloved. So in you this can situation. know that for the future. That's right, and that's an important <laughs> thing, you know, because right. ultimately that is my job, and that's that's all of our jobs as as spouses is to learn how to love our spouse better. So if if we don't know those things, and those are conversations that are challenging to get to, because but again, the whole point of sharing that thing, if it's a big deal, if it's a little deal. Don't worry about it. But if it's a big deal, you really should share it because your desire is for unity. Right. And trust that your spouse is not out to get you. Right. I mean, that is, and we heard that another couple say that um, just recently in our in our couples group when we were talking about anger. Like they, they say that to each other. They say, hey, you know, I'm not out to get you. Like I'm right. This I'm is not here. an adversarial relationship. This is, exactly. I, I want to love you and I want to understand what did I do to hurt you? You know, that's, that, that's the seeking to understand. Um, but just in, but it has to be rooted in that trust. Like you really have to trust that the other person, and you want to assume the best. Right. Because if you're thinking, oh, they said that, they said that because they knew it would get me angry. Right. Well, you know what? That is exactly the wrong thought. That is not the way to achieve unity. You need to assume, you know what? I'm going to assume they did not know right. that that would it, hurt. And there was an example not too long ago. Was it was it John Bosco in January? I can't remember when. Saint the, but we were reading John a story Bosco about John Bosco was him. in January, yeah. So, but, but it talked January about when he was a little boy, and he would come home to his mom, and he would come all beaten up um, from the kids in the neighborhood or what have you. Mm -hmm. And um, and he would say... Uh, and she would get mad. She would get mad at those boys, right? I mean, trying to defend her son, who was this saintly little kid. And he said, oh, no, Mama, they, 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 don't, they don't mean harm that they, they just don't have as good a mom as I do mm -hmm. and they're better when I'm around so I want to go and, and spend time with them I mean 
by that. I mean, that's what a saint would say. You know, a saint would look at the situation and say, I'm assuming the best of intentions. Whatever, okay. whatever they did, they stepped on my toe, they wronged me, they, they, they. I'm going to assume they didn't mean to do they that. They didn't mean to do that. With or the best they of intentions. didn't know how important it was to me right. that they did this. Right. Or they didn't know. Because chances are, honestly, your spouse didn't doesn't know. know. Right. Especially if they're a man. Rare, no, rare. Just kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think we're going to edit that out. That but. was so <laughs> sexist. I can't believe you. Um, no, but, it goes both ways. But, but you know, and, and ultimately, again, not to, to keep drawing back to Jesus, the full authority on this subject, but, you know, on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, right. he assumed that we did not know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Right. You know, that he did that for us, and so that we have to pass that on with us. Okay, so, so that's just kind of to, Let me just, yeah, let's just wrap up there. So first, clarity, see, clarity over agreement. Yes. Try to find the root cause and trust that your spouse is not out to get you. Okay. So those are great principles. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at the end of the day, at least I'm going to speak for all the men uh, here, I want some rules to win <laughs> every argument. Okay? Because that's what I want. That's what we're here for. I know, everyone, that's why you're listening to this podcast right now. I think we started out right the now. podcast by saying it's not about winning, Michael. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> so there are no rules to win every argument because you both win. All right, all right. Well, everybody wins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if everyone's super, nobody's super. Okay. All right, but we do have a couple. We do have a couple guidelines um, that I think that are helpful. That's right. You know, helpful little kind of like practical things. Right. So remember. those are the other stuff that we talk about, kind of big, big overarching principles, things to think about that help. That again have helped us. You may have other things, uh, but the guidelines. The first one I think is important is just stick to the subject. You know that there are so many times where we want to bring in every other issue and try to make even trivial little things because you're emotional. I mean, I, I think I've, I've I've said this before. But like when you get angry, the synapses in your brains fuse, and your brain fuses, and so it's harder to think and have clarity. And and what was the issue? Kind of we just talked about like finding out what the root cause is. You got to stick to that subject. Don't right. get deviated. Don't get distracted. You don't want to solve all the problems in the universe and in your marriage in this one argument. Right. It, it stick to the subject. Stick to what we're talking about. Right. Um, and especially if things have been forgiven in the past, something that they did yesterday or last yes. week, you just, you got to leave it there. That's got to go away because otherwise you really didn't forgive. Right. You know, that, that's a challenge. Not that you don't get over it immediately, mm -hmm. but you really need to work. That's your problem. That's not your spouse's. If you've forgiven, you've got to work through that. Right. Um, and, and, and I should just say on a, maybe a guideline that firsthand, don't bring up trivial stuff. I mean, kind of just alluded to that. I think that'd be the first guideline. Trivial stuff, deal with it. Die to yourself and get over it. Mm -hmm. Bring up stuff that's like important. something like your husband didn't hang up the keys where he's supposed to. You know what? It's okay. If you're really mad about that, just deal with just, it. Deal with it. It's yeah. not, it's not worth it. So so first, mm -hmm. let's let's not deal with this. You know, let's deal with serious matters that are really a challenge or really hurt or really right. whatever. To stick to the subject. And then um, when you're talking, it's good to use those I statements. You know, uh, like I really feel hurt when you blah 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 blah, as opposed to you hurt me when you did this because you're putting it on the other person like it's right. all their fault. Right. But instead, talk about yourself because that's what you know best, you know, and right. you can control that. And you have to, you're trusting that the other person wants to know that, that's that right. they want to know. It's being very vulnerable. You, it, you know what? And it's actually really hard. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's very, I found that more difficult than saying, well, you know, will you forgive me, which is hard to say, but I think it's really hard to say, you know what? I was really hurt when you did this because I found it. I think it's very vulnerable to say it, that. It, it's very. You're, you're really exposing yourself. You're, you're right. naked, uh, literally. You know, in emotional sense, in mm -hmm. front of your spouse, and that, and that is hard. And that is hard to break that down. And uh, at least for particularly for men, mm -hmm. to admit that we were hurt. Right. No, no guy really wants to feel weak or or vulnerable. But that before our spouse, we are. Right. And and it's okay. And it's it's, it's good. Important. And it's very important. And again. The goal here isn't that you're the tough guy in the relationship, but that you're a stronger married couple, which means you're more unified, which means you're more honest and genuine. And I forces you to be genuine and yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're not forcing them into something. You're just sharing who you are and where your heart is at. Right. Because also, too, in, in the communications, I perceived, I understood, I thought, I, you know, mm -hmm. it's you're taking responsibility that you know, in communications and everything else, it's, this is what I, I felt. This is what I understood. This is what I perceived, right. you know, in that situation. And it's good to avoid absolutes too. Like, you know, I never say. use absolutes. 
You know what I say? Well, you always do this. That's you right. always say this. Well, you never remember. You know, that's just, it's just demeaning, honestly. Right. I, th- I think it's, it is. Well, it's false. It's, it's a lie. Right. That's not true. Um, mm-hmm. Because it, that's never the case. Right. Um, and it's putting that other person in a box, which is not fair. In other words, don't go to bed angry. You know, I think Scripture talks about, you know, don't let the sun go down on your, your anger. Um, and, and, and the whole point of this is that you don't want to leave an issue to fester. You want to deal with it. You, you don't want to leave an impediment and a, and a block and an obstacle in your marriage and in the unity that you are striving for. So you really want to work that through. And so, that, again, if, if you've assumed already it's not a trivial issue, um, and yes, you may need to take some time to think about it so you can be charitable, so that you can be collected, and, and that's always important. I mean, take the time you need to kind of put yourself in the right mind, but don't let it fester, because in darkness, it gains more power over you, and it actually, a, um, things become bigger, becomes bigger than life, and they really get blown out of proportion, and then they blow up later, and you don't want that, because that's not what your marriage needs. Uh, but on the other side, there are times when if you're arguing and it's getting late, you know, the whole go, don't go to bed angry. Sometimes you may just need to say, hey, let's just take a time out here. And because it's midnight and I'm really tired and I'm not thinking as clearly, there's, a, there's the, uh, the old uh, acronym HALT, hungry, angry, line, lonely, and tired. And those are, those are the four bad times to make good decisions. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, if you really are tired, I think there's real great wisdom and prudence in maybe going to sleep and waking up in the morning. But I think the point of that saying is that you don't want to just be like, in the middle of an argument, just be like, walk away. Well, that's that's huge. You know, like Walking away is the greatest disrespect, <sighs> I think. I, I mean, it's one thing to say to your spouse, you know what, I'm just going to take a couple minutes, I'm just going to go for a walk, and I can come back and we can talk about this. That's, right. that's one thing. But in the middle of an argument, just be like, well, blah, 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 and turn around and slam the door and walk away. That is unacceptable. Yeah, you can't seek to have the last word. You That's cannot. not, that this is isn't not a movie. unity. <laughs> this isn't a sitcom. This That's is right. real life. And if your goal is we're going to get receive, achieve unity here, then you can't, you can't walk away. Um, you can't walk away disrespectfully. That's right. I That's think right. You there can is, take a break. You can certainly take a break. You know, and every personality is different. You know, like that's not the way we do it. We usually just kind of keep plowing ahead until yep. it's all taken care of. Right. But I understand that not everybody is like that. And some people just be, and, but, but you have, it has to be with respect. It has to be with, you know what? I'm just going to ask you. I'm just going to, and if you know each other, you're going to know, okay, yes, this is, this is what we do. This right. is our mode of arguing is that. Sometimes we need to take a break because so and so needs to take a walk or whatever, right. and think about things. And, and there's probably another, you know, couple little things that you know that you might add, like no name calling or things of that nature that just throw fuel on the fire, Absolutely. that just just incite things. And um, but but the, I think one of the, the I don't know if there's a last one, but I'll, I'll just say this. Yeah, the, this is the last one. Okay. Most important. Sure. Is is seeking forgiveness? And um, I remember my father-in-law uh, right before we were married said, a, a real man is the one who is first to seek forgiveness admit and admit that he was wrong. And that's hard. That's hard for anybody to do, to admit that they were wrong. But you know what? I'm going to say this particularly to the men. Uh, guys, we need to be the first ones who step up and take uh, responsibility. We can't fix our wives or our spouses, but we can take responsibility and say, I was wrong. I'm not going to force you to, to – I'm not going to demand forgiveness from you or demand that you um, – um, say you're sorry for all the things that you uh, affront, you're a great affront to me or whatever, but I can take responsibility for my part and how I contributed and exacerbated or um, wronged you or whatever. I think that's part of a man being the spiritual leader in the home. That's right. You know, and I know it's hard yeah. and you know, it's, and it's hard for anybody, but I think, I, I do think that you're right. And I think that's something that God would ask of the husbands and protecting his wife is to be the one to say first, I, I feel weird saying that because no, well, I, I, I should I, I say, think, though, I have to say, in all honesty, Mike very often is the first one to say, you know, I'm sorry for whatever. Right. Well, and, and I do think when you think about a leader, you think about Christ, right? right Again, that's right. And what was he? He was he was the one who was ready to serve. He's defined leadership mm-hmm. um, as a servant. They're the first to step in and serve. And so we need to get get down and, and realize, you know, I'm sorry. I and also wrong. just to kind of if we talked about this in the um, sibling conflict, but just to give the formula, if you will, for asking forgiveness. And I think right. this is very important. And especially in marriage, it's important because I think the words are even more poignant, you know, because these are big things at stake. But to say, you know, after you've 
found out what the real issue was. You've understood your spouse, and now you can understand what the disagreement was. You can understand where they are coming from. Then you can say, in all genuine honesty, I am sorry for disrespecting you in this way. And you don't have to say, but I didn't mean to, okay? Because everything before but is BS. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so you don't, don't say but. There's no buts. I am sorry for disrespecting you in this Whatever. way. Whatever. Say, it was wrong. It is good. Even if I, you didn't. I even think as I, I was, was wrong. wrong. Even if you didn't mean to. Even if it was an accident. Doesn't matter. You still, still, still say it. It's okay. That's right. It was wrong. It was wrong for me to do that. Will you forgive me? And then, and it's a beautiful thing because then your spouse can feel understood and That's that right. you really kind of just put it right out there. And I think I have found it's very hard to still be angry at Mike when he honestly looks at me in the face and says, I'm sorry for doing this. It was wrong. For, for someone to say, look at you and say, it was wrong for me to do this. Will you forgive me? It's very That's how you it's win very the humbling. argument right there. <laughs> So okay, I told you, you we're both. gonna come right back around. <laughs> that's so how admit you were wrong <laughs> and you win and she wins or both of you win. But uh, with but with sincerity. No, yeah, you know, and, and, and you can't really honestly do that without seeking first to understand and, you know, and all those other things. I do I do want to say a one little note about people who say, Well, I don't feel sorry, so I'm gonna wait till I feel sorry to say it. And I think that is just Crock. an excuse. That's just an excuse. And that's just being a wimp. That's just wimping out. Because you know what? We have to do things all the time that we don't feel like doing that are a lot less important than asking forgiveness of your spouse. That's right. And very often, you f do something and the feelings come later. Fake it till you make it. You fake it till you make it. Exactly. <laughs> you have to be real and genuine and recognize yes. your role and your responsibility and take it up. And even if your feelings aren't there yet, that's yep. okay. That's right. And They'll it will catch grow. Up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably a good note to, to, to end on, seeking right. forgiveness. And that's, again, yes. that's what, again, we, we the whole point of this is that um, arguments and disagreements and conflict are about building unity. Right. And the, the goal of that unity is reconciliation, which happens in the end. And it's great because then, you you know, Mike and I, the only reason we have such a good marriage is because we've argued so much. That's right. We're really, <laughs> you know, we probably could go on Countless for another arguments. half hour at the very least just giving you some, some great insights that, that we've screwed up in our marriage. <laughs> the things that we've done wrong that we hope you don't do. <laughs> That's right. So so again, uh, thank you so much for listening to Messy Parenting. Hey, we want to give our shout outs. Oh, that's right. Okay. So we got some uh, some contact We're... from folks that we don't actually know, um, or at least I, I don't know. Uh, Craig in uh, Western Australia, great to hear from you. Thanks Western for your- Western Australia. Right. Did I say that? You sound like Austria. Australia. Australia. <laughs> um, thanks, Craig. We are so Craig. glad you're listening. Yes, yeah, great. Uh, Alyssa in Denver, thanks for your note. You Both of you were so encouraging. Really appreciate that. Yes. If you found this podcast helpful, let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, we had somebody... You too may get a shout out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that and five bucks will get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, but it's it's great to have that. If you uh, like it, share it. Uh, whether it be on Facebook, uh, on, online, um, come to our our uh, website, messyparenting.org. And if you like us on Facebook, then when every time we put out a new podcast or whatever, you'll get that on your news feed and you or can you share it with other people. And Or you can subscribe, subscribe on, on iTunes. iTunes or make yes. a comment on iTunes. We had someone on there, I can't remember her name right now, said my new favorite podcast, which is fun. Yes. Uh, so, hey, and if you have ideas, suggestions, reactions, things you disagree with, things please you have a problem give us with. Uh, please give us ideas. We'd love to do, we, we are here to serve you, really. And if there's something you feel like you'd like us to talk about, just let us know or something we should expand on we would love love to hear from you thanks so much all right until next time may the lord bless you and keep you <laughs>